Greetings, Glitter Gang, and welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine, and today we are crafting live from the December Daily Wallet album. This is our Christmas in July 2023 project. Always takes longer than July for me to do these, which is why we start them in July, because otherwise you would have no Christmas projects anywhere close to Christmas. So this year's project is we're making these individual expanding photo wallets. Um, and then we're going to make a box at the end to hold all of them. And it's in the December daily style in, in the sense that you can do a wallet for every day if you wanted to, of course, but I had in mind more to do wallets for each activity that you did over the holidays. So where we left off was we were de decorating, matting the first wallet and we had made some progress, but not totally finished it. So um, where we left off is we had matted the front and flap of the back pocket. And I think made the insert. And now we just need to line the pocket. And then it's kind of the same situation on the inside. We have the inserts all finished. They're going to go here, here, here. And here so they're going to kind of look like so once they're all in there okay but we still have to mat the pockets so that's kind of what we're going to be working on at the start of today's show is the matting of pockets and then once we're done with that we're going to move on to the next one of these um so we'll be doing a photoshop sesh where we are working on um the uh what do I want to say? Oh, making our own designer inserts and things kind of like we did earlier in the project. So welcome and or welcome back to my channel. We craft live on Thursdays, projects in real time. See the decision making process, the planning process, the whole thing from start to finish. This is one of those projects. There are a ton of links in the video description. If you're catching us for the first time, check out more about the show this if this is your first video you're seeing and you're watching this video on youtube you're not watching it live uh this is part of a playlist where i'm showing this entire project start to finish in real time you can check for the other videos in the playlist to see how the whole thing came together i gave you all the measurements and everything you need hello everyone how are you <gasps> who's this who's this <laughs> We had a little drive-by, a little drive-by. All right, so um, brief weather update, just to let you know, we are done with our very minimal involvement with Hurricane Idalia. Um, it's so funny after I posted on Facebook that we were done with the hurricane and we hadn't lost power. We then had a series of thunderstorms roll in where we lost power during the thunderstorms. So we didn't lose power during any of the wind disturbance or storms caused by the hurricane. Um, but we did buy some that were like trailing it, <laughs> which I was like, of course. And Liz and I were so mad. We were like furiously texting each other because we were on different floors of the house and we were furiously texting each other about like, this we got through that whole thing and now we lose power now <laughs> so anyway it was brief powers back shouldn't have any weather today to interfere with the power at all um so i think we should be in good shape for both shows power wise you know i was fighting for my life last week and that was comcast that had caused that problem not the power company so you never know. You never know. All right. So let's pick some paper. So we need paper for here, 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 and here. So one, two, three, four, five, six different patterns that all blend together. And the things that we're going to see the most... A little bit of pink, but these stars will be the main thing that we have to kind of decorate around. It's going to be these stars. So we just want to make sure that we don't overuse that pattern too much. So I think this can go on the pocket. 
and maybe let's see No, this can line one of these pockets. So we'll do maybe this and this. We have to kind of be aware of how things look together because I actually don't know that I love how those two things look together. So maybe put that at the top. So we have one, two, three, four of these. This is the very bottom and we need two to go in between them. Or one, two, three, four. It's a lot of red. It's a lot of red. Don't know, don't know about how much red that is. Maybe let's take a look at some patterns that haven't been chopped into yet. Okay, so like this holly here is definitely gonna be better than this holly here for what we're trying to do. So now we're gonna, it's like maybe we keep it cool with just blues and pops of red. So then maybe these dogs, I don't, I don't think they quite work because there's so much foliage. I think even just this would be, oh, maybe these two on the other side. We'll do this as the liner and this as the front of the pocket. Okay, okay. So they'll be on this pocket over on the left. So we just need a fourth pattern for over here on the right. And the one I think I like the most, even though it's already used on the page, is this one. So if we'll do this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. And then that's how they'll all kind of come together. Okay. All right. So now we need to do some measuring and some chopping. And go from there. But other than... a our yard being totally covered in pine needles, we're in pretty good shape. I don't think I noticed any major drama or problems from the storm. So, um, so that's good. Now it may have been, and there's just no way to know, but um, over the weekend we we're without power for several hours because we had to have our transformer replaced. Um, <laughs> I've never had more power problems in my life. In my life <laughs> than in this place. In this place. <laughs> just don't understand. But anyway, um, yeah, our Mr. Lifeguard went for his run. And... Uh, notice the transformer was leaking oil, reported it to the power company. So then a guy out to, well, they shut the power off and they sent a guy out to repair it and he looked at it and decided to just replace it. And so he replaced it and then he left. Um, and I did research and by research, I mean, Googled briefly, <laughs> Whether or not a malfunctioning transformer can cause power problems inside the house, and it can. So perhaps that will improve. I'm not holding my breath based on the power going out yesterday because of rain. So, um, but you know, you never know. You never know. Perhaps. Perhaps. All right. Hi, are you helping? Are you helping? Are you such a good boy? Such a good helper boy? Okay. Go say hi to your friends.
You don't want to say hi to your friends. You just want pets. I see. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Welcome back. <laughs> oh. Hey. Hey. You want one of these? Oh. oh, oh. Oh, you're still just a kitten, aren't you? Marcel is one, everyone. Marcel had his birthday. Marcel is one now. That's true. I might not have power if I, in Tampa right now. <laughs> it's, it's definitely was a better situation for us than it was for people in Tampa. I know um, some people we know flooding in their houses and things. So, um, he's a little paper thief. You're a little paper thief. Are you a little paper thief? Yee. You a little paper thief? Is this yours? Yeah, kill it. Kill it. Kill it. So I'm just chopping paper for lining the pockets and trying to keep my assistant. Okay. 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 I'll just take this. You know, well, I'll just take this. Keep my assistant busy. Thank you for the face rubs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think the reason he's so interested in the trimmer is he knows the trimmer is where his little paper strip friends come from. Yeah, he's checking. The oh no, he's checking the recycling bin for his paper strips. Oh my gosh, Marcel remembers. What a smart kitty. You a smart kitty? Yeah. All right. Okay. So now that I have all the borders cut off all the papers, we need to do some math. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make notes um, on how everything needs to um, kind of be... Uh, planned out and everything so that we're only going to do these measurements once. Alrighty. So I'm going to write them with a pen because they're going to get covered up. Alright, so this piece is 4 by 7. So that means that what's going to go on it is going to be 3 and 3 quarters by six and three quarters, okay? All right, and these are five inches across, we know, so we know that all of them are gonna be by, or are all gonna be four and three quarters by something. So, I'm gonna go ahead and write that on all of them. Okay, so 
Um, and then this one is, um, we'll just do it like this. We'll just say, um, technically it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. We'll talk about, you know, how we're not going to cut a piece that's exactly, exactly that size. So with these, when we're, when we're going down, we just want to make sure we're doing it far enough to get past where these join. We don't have to go all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to do this distance plus an inch and that'll be sufficient. So for these two in the middle, it's two and a half. So four and three quarters by two and a half. And then this one at the top is by two. And then at the bottom, two and three quarters. Okay, so that's all, that's all the measurements now. So then on the back, okay, and I just want to do one thing. One thing I want to talk about with this is when we did our Photoshopping, we need to remember to add an additional eighth of an inch for this window. So I want to, so it's four and three quarters by four and three quarters for these. And then I just want to talk about what's this window. And this window is one and seven eighths by two and a half. No, two and five eighths. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. Uh, I have to, I have to drink some water. One two one and seven eighths by two and five eighths is what this window size needs to be. Okay. And so, um, that I'm just drawing that there so that we know what to write on the rest of them. And then for this piece, it is two and three quarters. So it's four and three quarters by two and three quarters. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. So great. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and this is just like a, you know, a, a quality of life improvement sort of thing that you can make for yourself, which is I'm going to open this where I've written all these and then I'm going to just open all these up and I'm going to write them, write all the measurements in each of these so that we only have to measure one time. Hey, buddy. What an interesting little kitty cat. Okay. All right. So it is kind of, you know, not, it's not especially tedious to write this all out. Um, but it's definitely less tedious than, um, measuring it every single time. So all future ones will be easier to do. And cause you could conceivably doing, be doing like 25 of these. If you were going to do a full December daily, that's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of time. Okay. So this one's done. All right. Oh, it's not done. Cause I'll, you know what? Let's do all the insides and then we'll do all the fronts or all the backs. And what I'm writing down is the size that I need to cut the paper, not the size of the mats. You can do it either way, but if you write down the size of the paper, you're going to have to do a small math every single time you go to cut. And why do that? Why do any kind of math? In fact, the real question that needs answering is why math? 
Why math at all? Just ask ChatGPT to do it. Although apparently ChatGPT is super bad at math now. So <laughs> it's been talking to so many people it can't do math anymore. Which I find kind of funny. I'm sure that there's a lesson we can all learn in there. But yeah, it's some basic math problems that it used to be able to do it can no longer do. And I guess it's hard to get it to unlearn things. Once it's learned things, almost impossible. So I don't know if it's going to get smarter over, over time. <laughs> I think it may actually the, go the other way. And yes, I do recommend you, you know, assembling always i always recommend assembly line type crafting where you do you know one step to the end then the next step to the end so do all the do all the construction do all the matting do all the marking because that way you're not switching gears as often and at least if your brain works anything like mine you'll be you won't forget stuff <laughs> What am I doing? Well, I mean, I'll forget stuff, but I don't have to remind myself as often. Like, I don't have to measure these every single time I go to math them. That's kind of the idea. And we're going to go and do the backs right now so this will be the one where we switch gears so i hope you all had wonderful weekends we what did we do i think our big accomplishment for the weekend was did we make those muffins i'm working on muffins now so I've conquered food. <laughs> I've conquered food. Food and I, the battle has finally been won and it's been won by me. Never again will food win. <laughs> Never again. Speaking of, remember uh, last week we talked about the question, what's for dinner? Yesterday, uh, I walked past my sister and she asked me what was for dinner and I wanted to do a little small murder <laughs> I wanted to do a small murder yeah so Candy just made a comment in the chat in regards to chat GPT uh, learning bad math habits that it, they're having trouble getting it to unlearn and how it can't do basic math is because it's only as smart as what everyone's putting on the internet and so she said the mass confusion on the correct order of calculations and math equations has got to confuse it. And the, the one that I think that's like the most thing is if you remember in school, and I don't know how they teach it outside the U.S., but at least the way I learned it is PEMDAS, which uh, is how to do the correct order. So it um, stands for parentheses. Um, and then this is the exponent, exponentials, then multiplication, then this is division, then you add, and then you subtract. Okay. All right. So PEMDAS would say that you do parentheses first. So this becomes 4 to the third power times 4 divided by 6 minus 12. Okay. So then it would say you would just do 4 to the third power, which 4 times 4 is 16. I don't know, man. See? 64. 
64. All right, so now it's 64 times 4 divided by 6 minus 12. But here is where the problem lies. M and D, they are weighted equally in PEMDAS, meaning you do parentheses first, you do exponents, exponents, exponents second, you do multiplication third, you do division third, you do addition fourth, you do subtraction fourth. Okay, so that's the problem. So the problem is, if your equation has multiplication and division, it's like the M is first in PEMDAS, but it's just for, it's not, it's not mathematically first, is my understanding. It's a, yeah, it's, so then you go, yeah, so then you go left to right. But this is where it kind of breaks down, right? Is like people don't know, are we multiplying, are we dividing? Some people don't know PEMDAS at all. Math is fake anyways, so it's completely a human construct. <laughs> so there's no like scientific inquiry we can do. <laughs> it's like we can't test it. We can't do equations, <laughs> so, or we can't do a science experiment on it. So, yeah, it's rough. It's rough. So, Chad GPT has to absorb all that confusion. And that's why it's becoming bad at math, I think. The more it learns, the worse it gets. It's probably because on social media, people are deliberately putting poorly written equations so that they can Oh, yeah, to start fights in the comments. Start fights, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's read all of those. So yeah. <laughs> So Liz, uh, Liz says it's because people put those fake equations on social media to start fights in the comments. And it's like, yes, I see so many of those where people in the comments are like, it's just too pem to stop it, everyone. Why are you so bad at math? And it's like, well, because this was deliberately written to be confusing. <laughs> That's why. Not how anyone would Okay, and I'll go over these measurements one more time for those of you who are taking notes. So that you know all, you have all these measurements. So if there hadn't have been a hurricane and we hadn't decided to do a little baking project, our grocery list would have only had four items on it this week. Um, but because our grocery list only had four items on it this week and because a hurricane was coming in, we had to buy some shelf stable food just in case we lost power for a significant portion of time, which ended up not being a big deal. But like we are... Having, having gone through it from the side where it ended up being a very big deal, <laughs> um, you know, we're on the over-prepare, we're over-prepare, <laughs> um, and then you just have extra granola bars, you know. Better to over-prepare and have extra granola bars that you don't need than to be boiling rice on your grill in your backyard for the fifth time in three days, <laughs> so... Um, which, you know, thankfully that's always an option. So, um, and Mr. Lifeguard informed me we were out of peanut butter anyway, almost going to, we were about to be out of peanut butter. Like we couldn't even just thaw out an extra loaf of bread and have peanut butter sandwiches because we were out of peanut butter. So, and that wasn't a, on the list. Peanut butter sandwiches wasn't on the meal plan because we have this like 
you know, we have this whole plan thing figured out. Okay, so now we're going to work on the inside here. So for, I'm going to start here. So I'm going to get the dogs. And it, they are going to be cut to three and three quarters wide by six and three quarters long. Three and three quarters wide by six and three quarters long. All right. And so we're going to put the dogs there. And then for this piece, I want it to be four and three quarters, but I only need about two inches of pattern paper. So we don't need to make the whole thing out of pattern paper if I only need two inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a two inch strip of pattern paper, two inches by six and three quarters. And then we'll just attach it to a scrap. Hello, buddy. Hi, are you here for fresh papers? Are you here for fresh papes? Fresh papes? And so I need um, a two inch, uh, two and three quarter inch strip of the pattern paper or the plain paper. So I'm just in the recycling bin looking for something that's not too crumpled. Um, I have, I have this, but I don't think it's wide enough. You want this? Is that too thick? How about this? Okay. Um, so I may not have enough scrap. It doesn't look like it. It's all too, oh wait, I found one. I found one, I found this guy. Okay. So I'm gonna cut this to two and three, co oh, two and three quarters, sir. <laughs> two and three quarters by six and three quarters. Hey, little buddy. Hi. Hi. Are you bored? Are you tired of being in here already? Okay. So this is now the proper size. And we're going to just use it as an extension of the other piece. Okay. All right. So All right. Okay. So now let me set this off to the side for a second. Hey buddy. Hi. Is that your chair now? Can I just sit on the very edge? Okay, thank you so much. All right. So for these, it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna line them up and tape on the back enough so that they will stick together. And I just like to go off the edge a little bit with the tape <coughs> so I don't have any splits on the edges. All right. And then we're just going to treat it like we would treat anything else we were going to put in a book like this. Oh, he's bothering Kitty. Oh, <laughs> sir, sir. Kitty's just trying to vibe and look out the window. <laughs> and Marcel's like, what if I jump on your face? I'm using the forest moss distressing to ink my edges. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stick this 
inside and I'm just going to put tape just past where I joined them together. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. Uh, cause it's, it's not, these things don't like fall out of the pockets, you know, so you don't need to go all the way to the bottom and not having tape on that leading edge really helps it, um, slide down in pretty easy, nice and nice and easy. All right. So let me burnish here. All right. And then we just slide this down in. And what I do is I just line it up okay and press it down. All right and now that's in there and you as far as the person who's putting things in and out of it can see it's going to stay so now we can go ahead and add this one So, um, so yeah, so he went and got a few things that might be useful if we lost power and couldn't open the freezer. So that's a, the big thing about, it's less that it's hard to cook because there's a lot of things that you can, you know, you can heat up cans of soup on your charcoal grill or your gas grill outside. You know, there's a lot of cooking you can't, you can boil rice, you can make rice and beans, like you don't. If you have some kind of basic staples, it's not the food that's the problem, it's the refrigerator because you can't open your refrigerator. So it's more like you just have to have stuff that you can, not stuff that doesn't have to be cooked, but stuff that doesn't have to go in the fridge. <laughs> you know, that's really the issue. You can boil pasta. If you have a jar of tomato sauce, you can boil, you can warm that up on the stove. There's a lot you can do with a gas grill, um, but, which, by the way, we don't have one of those because we left it in the garage. We just, our, it was on the back porch and we left it there. So now our cleaner has a, a glass grill, <laughs> a gas grill. So um, we have to um, do some research and get another one. That one we bought about 10 years ago when we lived in uh, South Riding. So it's been through one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, 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 four moves. Well, it, this would have been its fourth move, if, but if we hadn't left it. Um, and we didn't really research it a lot. It was just on sale at the local Home Depot and we just got it. So I want to do a little bit more research and now that I know what features are important to me and things like that and get one. And then we'll keep it in the baby shed because we now have a big shed. Uh, we have a papa shed and a baby shed. <laughs> All right. So here's our four pieces here. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a four and three quarter inch strip off all of them. So I'll do that. And then we'll uh, talk about what size everything needs to be. So anyway, so he went and he picked up a few things. And one of the things I had him get is my next project was going to be making a lot of like jumbo bakery style muffins. Um, and so that we could freeze some of them so that we could start having just a wide variety of things that we could thaw and eat that wasn't just like casseroles and things. Like I'm trying to improve the selection i guess and um and i'm trying to build it all out pretty you know without going too uh too wild like i'm trying i'm not trying to cook all the meals and all the comp prep all the meals and all the components 
I see it more as like a catalog, you know, like, like we're putting together or something or building a pantry or whatever, you know. Although I'm out of ancho chili powder, so this is my regular reminder, <laughs> my regular reminder that um, you don't have to get spices at the grocery store. It's probably cheaper if you don't and they will taste better and you'll have more options so instead of just chili powder and you don't know what the chilies are you can buy chili powder of the chilies you like the best which for us is brown chipotles and anchos those are our two those are our two favorite chili powders of all the chili powders we've tried there are some others i like aki panka and also Wahio, but the ones that we reach for the most are the brown chipotle and the ancho. And um, ancho is very inexpensive, and brown chipotle is, I mean, not expensive, like it's not saffron or whatever, but it does cost more <laughs> than regular chipotle. So, okay, so now I've got these measurements, and I've got these, so I just want to figure out the order I want them in. And I want the stars. Wait, did I cut one of them twice? I'm missing one. Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. Okay. So that's the four that I want. Now I want to think about what order would be best. So if I put this in this pocket, all right. So I'm thinking the stars maybe should go at the top and then the poinsettias and then the leaves and then the other poinsettias. So these stars will be on these leaves. I think that's a pretty good order to do it. So that means this one I need two inches and I'm going to cut the two inches from here because these are clustered more tightly together uh, than these, this end. And that's just going to get me just a little bit more star if I do it like, like that. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice a quarter inch of length where it doesn't matter as much just so I can get a little closer to those top stars all right so that's cut this is scrap so and that's four and three quarters by two so the next one is four and three quarters by two and a half so we'll cut two two and a half and the next one is also uh, two and a half. So we'll cut two, two and a half. Oh, Kitty is thrashing her tail. Marcel is really getting on her last nerve. His self-preservation is basically zero. And then this last one is two and three quarters. And I know that because I have them all just written out right here. All right, so we can go ahead and put aside the scraps. And now we're just going to add tape. So um, because these are all the same width, I can do a tape bracelet. And it can go a little bit faster. So yeah, so we uh, have been experimenting with the jumbo bakery muffins and getting those really nice muffin tops. And I think we really have uh, done very well, actually. Um, in fact, our, we did one round of muffins that was definitely overkill. <laughs> um, definitely, t we went too far. We flew, we muffined too close to the sun. <laughs> so, uh, and I was like, those muffin tops are too too much too much 
So now we kind of know how, how high to fill the cups and how to bake them to get the exact results that we want. And I did, um, we got a four pound bag of mixed berries from Costco and it had um, it had um, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. So no strawberries. They do have a four berry blend, which does have strawberries. But I have heard that strawberries don't preserve as well as the other three berries that they because they have to be cut they can turn brown in recipes and things so I decided not to do apparently you don't want to do anything you're going to preserve with strawberries that haven't been like freeze-dried um well I mean if you're making preserves I mean something that where the strawberry is going to be just frozen in more or less its natural state I guess so anyway um so yeah so we didn't make so we didn't do strawberries and I decided not to but um the three berry blend is nice they i thought about getting a five pound bag of blueberries because for blue for muffins you know blueberries are kind of the standard or whatever and after making these muffins i kind of realized why because the raspberries and the blackberries in the last batch that got baked they had kind of they were starting to melt into the batter and the batter was really the color was changing you know so the first batch is like beautiful. They get kind of dingier and dingier as they go. So one thing I think I might do in the future is divide the batter and only put fold the berries in at the last minute. You know, well, we'll I can do things that are kind of tedious like that because um, because they're gonna get baked. Or uh, because you're, we're not doing a whole day of cooking, you know, it's it's usually just going to be one item at a time from now on. So next is I do want to make some scones. I have a friend who's really a very good baker, and she says scones uh, freeze really well, and there's a lot of cook from frozen recipes so that you can find for making a ton of scones at once so i think we'll do berry scones and then this is kind of why i went with the three berry blend is that i'd rather have me personally i would rather have three berry scones than blueberry scones i love a blueberry scone but i would prefer like a raspberry uh, scone or something like that so that was kind of why we went we didn't go with blueberries in the end it was really just because for muffins blueberries would have been great but you know I also wanted to make scones I also have a yogurt cake I want to make So, you know, there's quite a few things. And I just thought I'd prefer the versatility. But I thought we were going to use a ton of these. Blueberries, and I feel like we barely made a dent. <laughs> <laughs> or these berries. I feel like we barely made it. Oh, I put that in the wrong spot. Uh, well, guess what we're going to just do? We're just going to live with it. The reason I didn't want this one here is because you see it's the same pattern. Ugh, should I pull it out? I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull it out. Let's see if I can get it out with just the delaminator. Maybe we'll get lucky.
All right, well, we didn't get particularly lucky, but <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, so scones, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, the way that they are traditionally made, they're a little denser than I would prefer, and I do make them to have more like the texture of an American biscuit. So I make them, now, they're denser than an American biscuit. So they're not just like wild berry biscuits. But. They're not as dense as a scone. So um, the the main thing that I do is. Um, I would say I don't need them as long, so I don't make as much gluten. And I don't activate as much gluten. And then I also use um, a soft wheat flour instead of an all-purpose flour. Um, and that helps as well. So, um, those are the two changes I would make over, say, like a traditional scone. Um, is I don't need them as much so the dough doesn't get as much chew to it. And then I use a lighter, softer wheat flour. Um, now, soft wheat flour is a product that I learned about when I moved to the Southeast and isn't widely available outside of the South wheat, uh, Southeast However, you can make it yourself by um, half and half AP flour and half and half cake flour. So you can mix. So like if the recipe calls for two cups of flour, you can do one cup all purpose and one cup cake. And that'll give you an effect similar to soft wheat is my understanding. But you can also buy the brand White Lily, um, which is a soft wheat flour. Um, and they call their flour all purpose, I believe. So, but it is a soft wheat flour. You can get white lily flour online um, as well, which is the main brand that I've used. So those are the big, those are the big differences. Um, so that helps a lot. And that helps with biscuits too, by the way. If you if you've never liked a biscuit you've made, most Southern style biscuits are made with a softer wheat flour like this. So it's, it's, I think it's a Southern thing uh, to use this flour for the most part. So um, if you, if you've been disappointed in your biscuits, try that. And if you find that you don't like the scones that you've made for similar reasons, you can try that as well. So my scones come out more like a dense biscuit. I would say. And not as much as a scone. So Donna says she uses white lily. Yeah, it's it's definitely like something I was unaware of until I had lived in the South. <laughs> So like definitely something that I don't think is, and I've lived on the West Coast and on the East Coast. And when I lived on, uh, in the East Coast, I lived in the Mid-Atlantic, which, you know, Virginia is like both the last Southern state and the first Northern state, kind of, as you're going up the coast. So it's like both, it's the transitional state. <laughs> So, you know, they might have had it, but they didn't, so. All right, 
So I'm just looking for anything where I might have some catching, where it might be a problem. And I just want to make sure, you know, everything's going to be cool. And I think what I'm going to do is, because you see how it's torn down the side so the pocket's not attached anymore? I think I'm going to just kind of pull this out all the way. Because what this is is the flap. And I'm just going to add a new flap. Just going to add a new flap. So I'm just going to take a scrap of the brown that's about an inch and just reattach that. It's not brown, it's olive. Uh, olive is the name of the cardstock. So I'm just going to get a two by one piece and I'm going to make a new one. Hey, bud. Hey, you've been giving them so many drive bys, huh? You've been doing lots of drive bys. Yeah. A drive by kitty. Drive by kitty. Drive by kitty. Yes. Yes, what a cute drive by kitty. Do you need lovings? a nice little baby cat huh you're a nice little baby cat aren't you oh you stepped on my arm oh it kind of hurt oh my gosh oh yes you're so cute yes okay Ugh. All right. Boop, boop. Oh, yes. All right. Hey. You want to bite it? Yum, nom, nom. Mmm, delicious. Hey. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum, yum. Are you helping? You're such a good helper. What a good helper you are. Yeah, what a good helper you are. Melanie says, do you remember the episode of Green Acres where Oliver asked Lisa to make pancakes because a gasket in their car needed to be replaced? I resemble that. Oh, I think it sounds like you're overworking. That you're stirring too long, basically, is what it sounds like. Hey. Hey. Look at you with your little heart paws right on top of where I need to be. Right on top of where I need to be. All right, I'm just peeling the tape off my little repair piece. 
And of course I did break this pocket just to show you how you fix a pocket. Obviously I could have done this without breaking a pocket and all my mistakes are scripted. All right, sir. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is going to use tweezers to get this exactly where I need it and then I'm going to press it down and now it's a pocket again all right done okay so now we're just going to add our last piece of paper and then we can stick things in the pockets. Okay. Ta-da. All right, it's like it never happened. Yay! All right, so now all we have to do is just fill our pockets. All right, so now here's our inside totally done. And you can see, you know, we did add that expansion. It's a good thing we did because even without photos, it's still pretty thick. So this one's gonna go here. So now we just need to pick our patterns of paper, or er, our single pattern. We only need one pattern. And I didn't write, of course, this is the one. I didn't write how big it needs to be, but it's not a big deal. It just needs to be, you know, long enough to go all the way down. So in this case, I'm gonna use the um, pink, the pink sheet with the candy canes on it. So let me go do, grab that one. Or actually, I'm gonna use the stamps. This one. And Kitty got, uh, she wants out of the garage, so let me just let her in. The house, Kitty. Did you get left out here? Okay. So. Yeah. There you go. All right. So. It well, looks like Marcel might want to go back. You want to go back, Marcel? No. Okay. He definitely does not. <laughs> He's hiding from me. Cool. So he is still with us, friends. <laughs> All right. So. Now we no longer have a kitty, but we still have a Marcelli. I think he thought he might want to go where Kitty was going, but then he was like, well, given the choice between being in the promised land and being with Kitty, I'm going to choose promised land. <laughs> All right. So I've cut that out and now I need to cut it and we're going to cut it four and three quarter inches wide and then I'm going to cut it three inches, four and three quarter by four and three quarters by three and then we'll extend it with plain white paper scraps if we have them. 
Um, but generally, uh, well, actually, no, this one we might want to make go all the way down because you can see through the holes. No, they're flat on the back, though, right? Yeah, they're flat on the back. Okay, never mind. We can still use the scrap paper. <laughs> you trying to leave? Oh. Kitty is, yeah, she wants snacks, that's why. Um, I printed two sheets of this accidentally, so I'm just going to go ahead and use. The, the cats do not have freedom in the sense that they can just come and go from the office as they want. But we've been testing letting them hang out if people aren't going to be going in and out if like Liz and I are both going to be in here working at the same time for like a couple hours where we can monitor them then we've been letting them go in because um, it did not make them any more or less annoying so like they they spent all their time and energy trying to get in the garage and um, they don't um, and Kitty in particular, uh, she just is devastated if everyone's in the garage and no one's in the house. Like she just, that, she finds that very upsetting. Um, so, and if I'm in the garage for long periods of time, she'll just sit at the door and scream and scream and scream so, to where like people have brought her to me <laughs> because she's just annoying everyone in the house so um it's a situation that has to be monitored because you know the door to the outside that most of the people in the house use the most regularly is this back door that's back here and so you know it has to be where um they will be supervised. We know no one's going to be going in or out for a while. If someone has to go out that wasn't expecting to go out, we do round up all the cats. Um, to make sure that they won't get out out. All right. Okay, so now we have our first fully completed wallet. Well, completed through the matting stage. It still needs to be, um, you know, decorated. We need to add little doodads to the pocket on the front and what have you. But here is how it looks. So here's what a completed wallet looks like when it's closed up. Okay, so the strap goes through the back. And then um, you undo the strap. And on the front is a clear window so that you can add things, ephemera, tickets, more photos, embellishments from the collection, what have you. Then we open up to the inside where we have our four pockets. And of course, you don't have to put these inserts in each of these pockets. You can, you know, style it how it's going to work for you um, with whatever activities you're doing or whatever needs you have for your album, what have you. But these are all the inserts we've designed so far. So we now have one wallet that's fully matted and ready to go. All right. And I know a huge part of what's going on with the cats is that cats just like need to, they need to survey their territory. So, you know, if they can't see, if they can't go through a door, if they can't see, 
inside like the cats our cats want to look in all the cupboards periodically they have they have some sort of clear they have some sort of monitoring schedule <laughs> so all right so there we go there's p wallet number one done so we're going to do a recording break here the next video will be a photoshop session to do all of the pockets and things for the next one and in fact let me write down let me just make myself a little permanent note of the size that i need everything to be so let me grab a scrap here okay so um i call it december daily wallet Photoshop. All right, so here is what we need. We need one that is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. We need two that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. We need the, well, this one. So we decided this, oh, I, I forgot. I, the reason I have these on my desk is because I wanted to add a pattern paper border. So we're not quite done. Um, this one is uh, five and a quarter by two and three quarters. So we need one that's two and three quarters wide by five and a quarter long. Is that right? Five and a quarter long is correct. Two and three quarters is not, it's two and a half. Okay. Two and a half. Okay. All right, so we just need a strip of pattern paper there. So I'm just gonna see what I've got that will work. I'm just going to use, uh, I'm going to use the stamps and I think I just need an inch. Uh, no, three quarters. It looks like three quarters. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, seven eighths. Let me, let me cut it. Let's do this. Hey, buddy. Hey, little nug nugget. How are you? Let's cut an inch. Hi. Hi. And see what we get. All right, so it's seven eighths. Hi. Hi by four and a quarter. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay. Hey, oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so that's one. And then this one will be easier. We can just cut it seven eighths from the beginning. Okay. All right, so let's write this down. Well, actually, this is not something that needs to be Photoshopped though, so we don't need to write it down. Um, I'm just going to put it down here. Well, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, 
that one does not need to be photoshopped okay so this one we want to photoshop this door front which is four and a quarter by three and three quarters so one at four and a quarter by three and three quarters for the front of this and then on the inside we've got these little journaling bits which are two inches by so we need two at two inches by three and three quarters all right so that's everything we've got to we've got to do in in the photoshop that'll be in the next video and now let me just uh, prep these and stick them down so i'm going to go ahead and tape these and then uh, you know what actually i'm just gonna chomp them and glue them i'm not gonna tape them So then it'll be totally done <laughs> at that point. So yeah, I would say the cats have a little bit more freedom, but not a lot. They can't come and go. They have to be totally supervised. And that's just because they're so highly motivated to go outside. And that's because they used to have the pool area where they could go outside anytime they wanted to be outside because it was fully screened in, including the roof. Um, and so they kind of miss that, but they like being in the office. Um, there's lots of places to crawl and explore and, and things. So they're okay. <laughs> so they're fine. All right. And we'll get them, uh, We'll eventually have some kind of outdoor area for them. It's just that's like a down the road project. So. Okay. And then I'm just going to repunch my hole so I don't cover it up completely. And then we punch it one more time and then we're good to go and so with these I just take the glue and I dot it around the circle and then that's how I add my tag reinforcers and then I burnish it a little more firmly from the back And we're good to go. All right. <sighs> Marcel. What a twerp. He's on top of the fridge. This is the one thing he does that I don't like. Um, but he uses the shelves over by the coffee. He uses the coffee counter and the shelves by the coffee counter to jump on top of the fridge. And then he's not always sure how to get back down. Sometimes he has to be rescued. All right. Okay. So what, now it's done for sure, for, for, for sure, for sure. <laughs> so, all right. So what we're going to do is... Um, in the next video we're going to do the photoshop designs for the next wallet 
and then we will get those printed out so that they're ready to go and then we can hopefully mat the next wallet today as well so hopefully we can have two wallets fully matted today so we shall see so the next video in this series will be the photoshop if you're not using this paper or if you're to you're not if you're not following along with the with the digital paper and doing all that of course you can just go ahead and skip that video and then the next video will be the next stage in the actual construction so i'm live on thursdays at 2 p.m eastern usa time and 9 p.m eastern usa time if the weather gods have smiled upon me and I have an archive of all of my past live shows going back over 10 years that you can access uh, through a membership as well as a playlist for this specific project available on my YouTube. So check the video description below for access to all of the projects through the years and check YouTube for the playlist for this one. So with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye now.